So we're recording. Okay. And thirty fourth lecture. Seven people. Okay. We have 55 in the class, so it's like half of the class almost. Is this career for today? Is this anything going on on campus today? It's, it's Friday. Just cold and Friday. <laughs> How? Okay. Wait a few more seconds. Hopefully, they watch the recorded lecture because anytime that they go check how many views on YouTube I have is like three, four. And it's like, no. And I sh I'm sure some of them are like people who just subscribe to the channel and they just check out and you know, what's going on. Is there something interesting going on? Okay, so before I start today's lecture, any questions about anything that we talked about in the class? Homework 12, quiz 4, which is due tonight. Don't forget about it. And I have this confusion that some students have that they think we, we are going to keep half like makeups. So I cannot guarantee that because even now with just like two makeups for my two classes, I'm just like tutoring students, writing makeups, grading. So it makes all all of our lives more difficult and i cannot add the extra credits that i wanted on time you know it's kind of like delays everything so make sure to take the quiz that is the bottom line because even if you score half out of 40 still you can go to tutoring and then make up for those points but if you don't take it at all it would be difficult to make up so remember the deadline for quiz for tonight and if you wanted to take the makeup quiz three, just, you know, most of you emailed me, I think, at this point, if you wanted to take it, if you want to take the makeup and you didn't email me, just do so. So I open it for you so you can take it. And after today, I'm gonna just like <coughs> delete makeup quiz three and substitute your highest grade out of the two quizzes there. So if you want to take it out, you know, after today, I should write another quiz for you. So again, it would be like, delay in seeing your extra credit points and all that. And we have makeup exam two today. And I also sent an announcement on Canvas that the location would be ran through 112 because that room was available from three to 6 p.m. So if you want to take makeup exam two, that is the time and place. And some of you emailed me that you couldn't take it on this time, so I scheduled a, your exam sooner. Some of you couldn't absolutely take it this week, so I scheduled it next week. So if you ha you're having similar situation and you didn't communicate that with me, just do. And I always tell students it never hurts to so just check with me, right? So email me and ask if you have any doubt or any question about anything. And we're starting to get close to the end of the semester and I don't mean to stress you out or like, I don't know, add to your stress, but just let's study to finish this course with a good grade. And I think I convinced, convinced most of you that that is easily possible. Any questions? If not, I just continue with the lecture. We talked about alcohol and phenols during the last two classes. And we talked about acidity and basicity. And when it comes to acids and bases, we have two well-established definitions that we're going to follow and I'm going to ask you an exam. One of them is bronsted lowry definition that based on that, an acid is a proton donor. And as I told you, when we say proton or proton, it means H plus. A hydrogen atom that has lost its one and only 
electron. Okay, so acid wants to donate this proton or lose it. For instance, HCl, right? You probably learned previously that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And your instructor, you know, someone like myself might have told you that if you see H, this is acid. And this is really basic definition and not entirely correct that anything that has H is necessarily acid. It should have the ability to donate this proton or lose this H plus, okay? And a base is a proton acceptor, okay? So acid wants to lose this, but base wants to get this proton. Well, if you also had a definition of conjugate acid and conjugate base, can anyone remember what those were? And I also have in the next slide, but I kept telling you, I told you last session and also in my previous class that I'm aware when I go back and forth between the slides, when I'm recording the audio, it just cuts based on each slide that I am. So I'm trying to do that, you know, minimum. But if I write you this equation from your book, for instance, HCl, let me go a little above so I don't hit the record bottom. Okay, then too high. If I have HCl, okay, plus H2O, and then this is in equilibrium with, so if I told you HCl has the ability to lose this proton, and proton is H plus, right? Basically, you can write HCl as H plus aqueous, it means that dissolved in water, plus Cl minus aqueous right so if hcl loses this proton h plus what does it remain from it cl minus right can everyone see that and what about h2o if h2o receives this proton right this h plus what would that be H3O plus, right? To the water molecule, we add one H plus. So it would be, in the sense of number of atoms, it would be H3O instead of H2O. And you should also balance the charge, right? So if you have like H plus here, and then you add that to this H2O, this would be H3O plus. Okay. And this one is an acid because it's the proton donor right it just got rid of this h plus and h2o in this example is a base because it accepted that proton based on brown based on brown said larry definition right and in the other side of the equation here h2o previously was a base when we write h3o plus we call that conjugate acid of water okay so here it show was the base in this example because it accepted the proton and the result would be conjugate acid any question so in this example what would be cl minus would it be an acid or base? Base. Exactly. So it would be conjugate base of HCl. Any question? So you see, and here I wrote the definition, the product of the proton exchange are called the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. And also here, because this Cl minus can accept proton, right? So it would be a base. This H3O plus can donate the proton. So it would be an acid. So it's consistent with the definition of acid and base that we talked about. And 
how do you think we can define and i oh, of course I, I have the answer here but how would you think that we can decide which acid is the strongest based on this definition that we have and also this equation that we wrote here in general if you have two acids and we want to compare which one is the stronger What's that? Uh, we're wondering about how strong an acid is. Yes, so I'm telling you, for instance, I tell you HCl or HBr, right? I give you two acids and I tell you how, you know, which one is the stronger based on, you know, right in this equilibrium here or like this reversible reaction here. So the answer is that when we dissolve an acid in water here, then it donates the proton more easily and you have like more, you know, Cl minus and H3O plus here, it means that it dissociates more easily, so it's a stronger, okay? But it's, if it has like difficulty, you know, generating these ions in water, it would be not that strong. So in general, to give you like more organized definition, your book says the strength of an acid in water, and we're talking about, you know, a strength of an acid in water, because here we have that plus water or H2O, is measured quantitatively by its acidity constant or ionization constant, Ka. And this concept and next slides that I'm going to talk about are a little mathematical and they are quantitative and they are similar to equilibrium constant that we had before. So if you learn that well, hopefully this would be easy. But before I go to the next slide, any question about this slide? Good. And I always tell my students, and I have a specifically this problem with my one-on-one -on -one class, or maybe they are more verbal and tell me, is that they study a lot, but they're suffering in the class. And I tell them, sometimes the students, they are studying, they go to the lecture, and I have students, you know, that they come to my office, they show me their notes, they're taking notes. But I tell them, any sentence that you read, you should make sure that it makes sense. And you should ask yourself how I can change it in exam, okay? And make sure that everything that you read makes sense. And if you read something and it doesn't make sense, always, I always tell students I'm one email away. And I'm usually fast with email sometimes, like this week that I was really busy with everything that was going on with the makeups and tutoring and all that. I get back one day late, but that is usually the latest. So just email me and ask me, don't let you have difficulty with anything, okay? Anyway, so here is the generic equation, and I call this generic because we don't have an element that the name is A, right? We just write it as a general demonstration that we can have an acid as HA, and that can be HCl, HBr, HF, right? It can be anything that has H. So this is, this is what this A means. So here we have an acid that we dissolve it in water. So what happens is that here you can write HA, HA aqueous plus A minus aqueous. Okay, and we call this proton, right? And this is the whole point of our discussion, that acid wants to lose this proton and then base wants to get or receive that proton. So this is the whole discussion that we have here. So we call that acid, I already wrote that, this would be base. And I always emphasize that in this example, water is a base because as we learned momentarily, water can also be an acid. So that's why I say in this example, HA is an acid and then H2O, water is a base. So what would be in this example H3O plus? Would it be an acid or a base? Acid. Exactly, and we call that 
conjugate acid. And what would be A minus? Exactly. Gate base. So if we want to write acidity constant or ionization constant, this is how we define it. You have concentration of your hydronium ion, basically H3O plus, okay? And remember that when we had that bracket, that means concentration. And that is, for instance, mole per liter, right? This is what we were solving before, right? And we multiply that by concentration of A minus, right, divided by concentration of R acid, okay? And we just consider the aqueous ones. So water is liquid. We just consider the concentrations of our, you know, ions or not ions specifically, the aqueous species. And by species, I mean my products and reactant. Or I mean, in this case, we're just dissolving this acid in water, okay? So it's not a specifically reaction per se, but we have like different in arrangement of bonding. So in a sense, it is. Any question writing this? So it's basically writing the equilibrium constant, but we don't write the concentration of water because that is liquid. We just write aqueous ones. Any questions? And it's the same as before, that when you had the coefficients, it would be to the power of that coefficient and all. But here, the coefficients all are one, so we don't have to worry about that. Good? So now, your book says, imagine instead of dissolving hydrochloric acid in water, I have only water by itself. Okay, so I substitute this HA, so this HA I told you that can be H plus A, and A can represent anything. So imagine this A now is OH, right? So this HA would be H2O. So in the above equation, let's just substitute this, I'm trying to find a better color. Okay, so here, instead of HA, if I write H2O, okay? The rest, you know, would be the same. So this H2O here is the same. This H3O plus is the same. And here, A minus, as I said, here, this is my A. This would be HO minus or OH minus. Okay. Any questions so far? We just substituted A with OH. Good. So now, if I want to write this Ka, and I do the same thing that I did here, just I substitute instead of A minus, I write, you know, HO minus, right? So chemists did experiments and then calculated this Ka value and then got the number 1.8 point uh, multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 16, okay? And that is what this number would be for water. And I don't expect you to memorize this number, but I expect you to be able to use it and then solve problems that I'm going to show in the next slide. So you should be able to write these till here, and then this value I give you, and you should be able to use it to do calculations. But for water, this ionization constant or acidity constant is 1.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 16. Is there a unit for that specifically? Great question. So if we want to calculate the unit, so here we would be having the concentration is mole per liter. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by mole per liter divided by concentration of water. So, and I think that also... Huh, that's a good, great question. 
Your book didn't write any. Okay. One per liter. So now, let me see. If we put here mole per liter, this would be mole per liter. But let me. So after solving the next example in the next slide, you know, I'll double check to make sure this is correct. But let's see. Yes, so 10 to the... Okay, you know, I think... Okay, in the next example, I'm going to show you that concentration of OH minus or HO minus and H3O plus, both of them are 10 to the power of minus seven. And we're going to solve this example in the next slide. Each of them would be 10 to the power of minus seven mole per liter. So based on what your book, you know, and you know, before coming to the class, I was looking at different resources too, because how we learned it back home, we had like two different concepts. One of them is equilibrium constant. The other one is acidity constant. And the difference between the two is with the concentration of water, this term okay. over here. But I think what your book wrote is just substituted this HA here, just that one with H2O. Okay. That's why it didn't write the proper, it, it doesn't have to the power of two. But that's a great, wondering. yeah. Because then you would have two moles per liter on the bottom, which would make it to where you didn't have it all. So I just wondering. Yes, so I mean, that's a great point. And I see what you're saying, but, you know, and this is the thing about like having like, different books, you know, each of them, the authors use their own method. I mean, the bottom line is correct. It's just like, and that's why I always tell students that these are like based on things that we agree on, how to write things. So in this ex specific example, your book just substituted this HA with this HO. That's why the power here is not two. But what you're saying totally So like if sense. you had a different acid than H2O, like you have like HCl there, you would ignore the H2O and just put HCl. Exactly. Okay. So this is how we write, or your book writes, the acidity constant. Great question. Okay. So for now, we consider the unit, you know, being mole per liter, but also, yeah, I'm going to check on this, you know, and give you a definite answer. Okay, but anything that, you know, we're not 100% sure, or I'm not 100% sure, I don't ask you in the exam, so you don't have to worry about that. But I'll, for the sake of learning, I'll get back to you on that. Because it's strange that your book didn't write a unit. So as your friend suggests, I think, you know, so the way that it wrote it, it should have a unit but it's not consistent with how your book wrote it. So I kind of double check on that to see whether or not that's an error with the book or not. Great questions. Any other question? Good. Okay, so now we want to solve a numerical problem basically. And can, any of you know from your previous chemistry course that what is molarity? And that is basically what we talked about you know, in the previous slide and also what we're doing, mole per liter, okay? So the amount of your solute, and solute is the thing that you, a substance that you dissolve in another substance. In this case, we're talking about, you know, our solution is aqueous, so we dissolve our substance in water. But in general, the moles of the substance that you dissolve in another substance, you know, so we call the larger amount of the liquid that we are solving something in, we call that solution, right? Or we call that solvent. The substance that we're dissolving in the solvent, we call that solute. And the whole thing, the mixture, we call that solution, okay? 
So moles of the solute per or solute per liters of a solution is molarity. Okay. And now we want to calculate molarity of water. Okay. So in other words, we want to know that if I have one liter of water, how many moles of water I have in it? Is this clear what we're going to solve? So, and I already wrote the procedure here, but I'm going to kind of like explain more by writing. So can anyone remember or have you ever learned what is density of water? Anyone? Or what is density? You know what is density or no? Mass times volume squared? What's that? Is mass times volume, or mass over volume cubed. Density? So, mass times no. so is mass, yes, divided by volume. So what you're thinking about is like maybe kilogram per cubic meter, for mass. instance, right? Or grams per cubic centimeter or like grams per liter and anything that is mass per volume we call that density and we know as a fact and these densities for different substances are tabulated so we don't have to worry about them so density of water is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter which is equivalent with one grams per, per milliliter okay so we assume that you know, I mean, we don't assume. If you kind of like worked, you know, with some examples or kind of like had chemistry courses prior to this and then the instructor taught you well, probably you have a sense of density of water, okay? And you, you, know, you don't have to remember this. I'll give you that in exam, but it's just like good to know, you know, density of water in general, okay? Any question about density and what density is? Good? So going back to the problem that we had, we want to see that in one liter of water, if I have like one liter of water, a container or like water bottle that is has one liter, I want to see how many moles of water are in there, okay? And the way that we can do it is by dimensional analysis, okay? And dimensional analysis is using units to help us solve problems. And if you have any other science course or any other course that has some sort of, you know, conversions in them, or even in your life, when you want to convert, you know, you have like, you know, liter of something, you know, the best example is just the example that we're working on. You have like some water and then you want to see what is the mass. Right, or sometimes if you go to the airport, <coughs> oh, I mean the example that in, you know, oh, you have like the, your suitcase and then you have the mass, you want to see, you know, what is the, oh, I mean that is not a good example because the things in your suitcase is not a solid or like a single substance, but you get the <coughs> idea, you know, I, you have like some, you know, water here and I, well, you, you know, I have like a, you know, gallon of water, and then you want to see what is the mass. For instance, you want to carry it, you want to have an understanding to see is it like manageable for you, you know what I mean? So what I'm saying is that lots of the things that we study in this class is applicable in your life. If you know how to convert units to each other or how to relate them to each other, it would be useful for you regardless. Anyway, so how we want to do that is the following. And I always tell to my 101 students, anything that you want to find, you write a question mark, you write the unit, and you write what you are looking for. So here, in this case, we want to find moles of water. Remember, we want to know how many moles of water exist, I guess, in one liter of solution. So whatever you want to find, you write on left side equals sign to whatever you want to find, right? Or whatever you are given, sorry. So you want to find how many moles of water exist in one liter of 
your solution, which in this case, our solution is just water, right? And how do you think I can relate liter to moles? Can any of you remember moles per liter? But do I have, so here we have density of water, right? Which is grams per milliliter. Or we can convert grams to liter, so we have that. But we also need another conversion factor, another unit to use to relate, you know, moles to gram per li liter. Okay, do you guys remember gram per moles? that we call that molar mass, which is mass of one mole of a compound. Does this familiar to you guys? How many of you heard of molar mass before? Most of you, okay. So in general, any element that we have for instance, water, uh, for instance, sorry, hydrogen or oxygen. You can refer to periodic table, you can read their mass, which is written below. So here in your classroom, molar mass of oxygen is 15.9994. In your book, it says 16, and either of them that you use is totally fine. And then for hydrogen, <coughs> that number is like, in your walls in the classroom is like 1.00795. And then in your textbook, it's like 1.01. 1 .01. And as I said, these numbers are really similar. So as long as you read the molar mass of hydrogen and solve the problem, that would be totally fine. Okay. So these are their molar mass. It means that if you have one mole of oxygen atom and you have, you know, the equipment or like a scale to measure the mass, it would be 16. The same thing for hydrogen. If you have one mole of hydrogen atoms, the mass would be 1.01. 1 .01. Does that make sense? So if you want to calculate molar mass of uh, water, H2O, you say you have two of hydrogen atoms plus one, because here the subscript is one, right? One multiplied by O. And then you substitute these values, right? And when you do that, it would be 16 plus 2.02. .02. would be 18.02 .02 grams per mole. It means mass of one mole of water is 18.02 .02 grams. Okay. Any questions so far? So here, first, I convert and I'll distinguish here. Hopefully, I can manage to write everything. So I convert liter to milliliter. And anyone know what is milli? Milli is 10 to the power of minus 3. OK? And we write these units or these ratios somehow, you know, they, the numerator and denominator, they cancel out. Okay. Now I'm going to write the rest here. So I write milliliter of H2O somehow that they cancel out. And I can convert that to grams. Right? because I have the you know, density here. So it means that density of water is one grams per milliliter. It means that if I have like one milliliter of water, the mass would be one grams, one gram, okay? And now finally, I want to convert grams per two moles, right? This gram with gram cancel out and then here I wrote molar mass, which is 18.06. So one mole of water has a mass of 
Any question writing this? So we start with what we want to find, equal sign what we are given. And then we write the rest of the these ratios somehow that this numerator, this denominator cancel out. And the way that we can relate leader to mole, we don't have just you know one ratio to write to convert them, but we can convert liters to grams by density and then grams to moles by molar mass. Any question? How many of you are comfortable writing this? Okay. So for those of you who are not comfortable writing this, do you have any questions that I can answer? Or you just need more practice? Okay. So just feel free to ask me, you know. And this is the thing about this course that it assumes that you know basics of chemistry well, and then I ask you, and then I realize that's not the case. So definitely it needs some revisions, at least your book. Anyway, so when you do the math, you get like 55.49 moles of H2O. Okay, that means molarity of water is 55.5 molar. And we write, you know, moles per liter as capital M, as molar. So if I ask you to calculate molarity of water, this is how you do it and they give you the density of water, which is one grams per milliliter. Any questions? And now, going back, let me add this, where was it? Right here. So, I wrote this acidity constant before, and as I said, you know, I'm not the most comfortable with what your book wrote here too, in the sense of how it is structured this um, acidity constant and the unit. But just following for now what your book said, we have this acidity constant, okay, for water. And now what we want to find, and this is your problem, 7.5. And as I said in your exam, I'm going to ask lots of questions from just like your problems in your textbook. So make sure to go through them, answer them. And if you have any questions, ask me because that helps you a lot with the grade. So here we want to prove that, you know, considering the above value of Ka and molarity of water being 55.5 molar prove concentration of H3O plus equals concentration of HO minus equals 10 to the power of minus 7 moles per liter. Do we have any volunteer to solve this problem? As I said, you don't have to answer correctly as long as you tell me your thought process. Okay, no one? So what you do, you just substitute Oh, sorry, here I had a typo. So this should be H2O. What about now? Anyone now that I corrected what I wrote wrong before? Yes. Do you want me to come up there or can I just walk You can also tell me just here I write it. Um, so you would plug in 10 to the negative 7 in place of the concentration of HL3 plus and HL minus in the K A equals. Uh-huh. So we want to prove this. 
Okay. Proof. I, I spelled it right, right? I don't know. For some reason, this seems proof. I don't know. It seems strange to me. Anyway, so we want to prove that the concentration of H3O plus equals concentration of HO minus, and both of them are 10 to the power of minus 7. What we are given is this value here and molarity of water. So then you would uh -huh. plug in the 55.5 molarity for H2O? Uh-huh, yes. So when we do that, you know, so you see that based on this expression, this equation here, you can write concentration of H3O plus multiplied by HO minus equal, so basically these two guys, this numerator multiplied by this denominator equals this denominator multiplied by that numerator, right? So we can write, you know, this. Does that make sense for everyone? Any questions of that? Okay, so now as your friend said, here we have concentration of, you know, water or basically molar molarity of water. So we just substitute that here. And he, you know, here even like your book says that this is moles per liter. So based on what it says, the unit that we had previously should be correct too, you know, so it should be, it should be having units based on what your book has written. Anyway, so when we do that, we just multiply these numbers by each other, right? So that would be approximately 10 to the power of minus 14. Okay, right? And here, the concentration of H3O plus equals concentration of H O minus, right? Because if I include your equation, or I guess if I just write it here again real quick, you know, Joe Page H2O. For every mole of H O minus being produced, you have also one mole of H3O plus being produced. And your volume is constant for both of them are one liter, right, in your solution. So their concentrations in water is the same. Does that make sense to everyone? But if we had coefficients here in this equation, right, if that was the case, for every mole of HO minus, you had two moles of H3O minus. So the concentrations wouldn't be equal in that case. But in this case, your concentrations are equal. So now you substitute any of them back in the equation that you had, right? Imagine that instead of HO minus, I substitute that with H3O plus, right? So what it tells me is that concentration of H3O plus multiplied by concentration of H3O plus, right? Because this one I can substitute with H3O plus, right? Because they are equal. That is 10 to the power of minus 14. So this is basically A multiplied by A equals A squared, right? Powers. So H3O plus to the power of 2 would be 10 to the power of minus 14. Can anyone tell me what is the concentration of hydronium? H3O plus. Exactly. Remember when we were working with the powers, if you have A or like, you know, to the power of B, that to the power of C, right? You write the base and then multiply these two guys, right? So here to find this concentration here, or like rather this concentration here, we divide minus 14 by two. But then also we said concentration of H3O plus equals concentration of HO minus. So that also should be 10 to the power of minus seven.
and the unit is moles per liter. Anytime that we write the concentration, it has the units of moles per liter. Okay. Any questions? Good. So we have a concept, and I have that in your. Are we good with this? Can I go to the next slide? Real quick. To or let. So your book and lots of scientists and chemists they don't like to work with negative powers like 10 to the power of minus 14 so they invented a concept to get rid of the negative power and that is pKa so if we have like Ka which we said is acidity constant right so if we define you know P of that you know, and we write that with the small letter P, that would be minus logarithm of that. And we talked about logarithm, or logarithm, better pronunciation, um, when we talked about re reactions, remember what it was? Are you guys familiar with that? So in general, you no, know, as I said, even if you have, like, you can have P of different concepts. And any of you, how many of you have heard of pH? Some of you? Not as many as I expected, but. <laughs> okay, so you say that, you know, the pH of this food is high or low, and then it should be consistent with pH of the body or, like, you know. So pH is nothing but minus logarithm of concentration of H plus, okay? So that is also this, and these are related with each other. So it's kind of like, so basically if you have, you know, the previous equation, you know, if we consider like, you know, concentration of H3O plus multiplied by concentration of OH minus equals 10 to the power of minus 14, right? If you get P of both sides, okay? Can anyone tell me, based on this definition, what would that be? It means minus logarithm of H3O plus multiplied by OH minus equals minus logarithm of 10 to the power of minus 14. Okay. So mine, do you remember that when we had logarithm of AB, that would be logarithm of A plus logarithm of B. Does that make sense to you guys? So here, that would be minus logarithm of H3O plus minus logarithm of OH minus equals, and can anyone tell me what is this value? 14, right? So logarithm, the base is 10 when we don't specify it, right? And this would be 14. And I included a video um, in Khan Academy, in the next slide to kind of go over logarithm in case you have like issues. So this one, can you tell me based on what I wrote earlier, what we call that one? Minus logarithm of that, you know. So here, you know, you can, you know, some books write H plus, some books write H3O plus, and I talk about this more in the next class. But as of right now, remember that that we call pH plus pOH equals 14, okay? And I really want to go through the attendance to give you extra credits. So I'm going to go back to the slide and through, through this, okay. 
So Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. You can also write it to answer that question correctly. A Lewis base is an electron pair donor. Okay. So you can just, as I said, write it so you can answer the question that I asked. Go to talk about this later, I guess. Every session I have like much more slides that I think I can cover in the class. Let me quickly, if you guys bear with me. And here, pKa equals 17. Remember, pKa is minus logarithm of Ka, right? Which is 17. And here, the base is 10. So your answer should be somehow, you know, for instance, if you have 10 to the power of minus 5, right? If you get minus logarithm of 10 to the power of minus 5 that would be 5 okay because this power basically goes becomes the coefficients and logarithm of 10 when the base and this number that you write in front of logarithm they are the same the answer is 1 okay I mean, the next question, you should be able to answer it. I mean, we talked about it in the class. So if you have like HA, right, plus H2O, that gives you, I write it here, A minus plus H3O plus. So what you do, you drop a hydrogen, right? So if you drop a hydrogen, your charge would be negative because your acid has lost a proton that has positive charge. And remember, proton is plus one. And I just want to give you extra credit, so ask me any question.